As we move on, I think you all will fine tune the chanting because I could hear 30 voices. Ideally, I should only hear one voice that sink, you know, and also it will be good if there is a leader who could have a, a mic with him. So you can always fall back on the leader that will also help until you all get tuned to the the sandhi vichayad where you have to pause and also the the rhythm so identify amongst you all who is who can take the lead so that becomes easier and it was sharp 11:29 when you all stopped so that good 14 15 minutes is just nice so we can just get on with the text the last we did was the the 26th verse where he said let not the wise man unsettle the minds of the ignorant and the ignorant are those who are attached to action Attachment is a product of ignorance and wherever one gets attached to you find yourself very comfortable and it is thereafter rather difficult to pull out someone from that comfort zone. So the wise man should not unsettle them, rather acting united with the self all they could do is make their actions attractive. So the moment you want to pull someone out of their comfort zone it becomes a great challenge, a great difficulty. You find that there is a great resistance, there is a, a backlash. I remember during my ashram days, I think it was early 92, there was a girl called Mana from Bombay. She was just 17 year old girl, almost the same age, a little elder to me because I joined when I was 16. I joined a little earlier. She came I think mid 92, a later half of 92. She was there for 6 odd months and then you know the, the rule in the ashram was 3 years the students do not leave the campus. If at all you do leave, you go along with the plan, the trip by the ashram where 
you end up going once a year for the lecture series along with Swamiji for those a week or so and then come back otherwise it is pretty much a, a sanctuary a laboratory a spiritual laboratory where you are protected where everything is conducive for your own spiritual transformation so but you could have your family visit you in case they need to whenever they require take a, a minor permission and you can come whenever Swamiji is there that too so you get the benefit but this girl one of the visits within the next maybe a year or so Swamiji was having lectures in Bombay and she along with everyone went with the group but she sought a special request instead of staying with the group where she would have been assigned to stay she requested for those five days can she stay back with her family and she said condition Swamiji I will join all wherever I am expected to I will follow the curriculum whatever I am expected the meals and the lectures and whatever the satsangs but just that I want to stay those four days with my parents it was said okay and then the drama starts no no the what happened was here is a girl who was from a very affluent family a very extroverted family a business community and here she got those vasanas somehow she got interested in Vedanta and she joined and it made so much sense all what this knowledge had to say a year or so having conditioned in the ashram with the knowledge when she went back to her own home looking at her own parents her siblings her near and dear she got wild she said you guys have gone nuts you, you, do, you guys do, you do know what you are doing to your life your life has no purpose meaningless existence just running behind non-essentials you know what is the purpose of life she started bombarding them with these Vedantic truths and mind you she was just 17 and parents have given her the permission to go and learn these higher values and her daughter comes back home after a year and starts what unsettling, their mind. unsettling the minds of everyone around them they did not say much during those days because they were happy to have the daughter back with them for those few evenings few days rather she went she came back with the group a week later a father came with two escort vehicles police yeah, this guy is a man of influence and the Bombay drive from ashram Bombay was just two and a half hours so he came with two police escort vehicles came to the ashram put his foot down and said my daughter is a minor I have taken this decision she would not continue to study this knowledge any further I have entire right on her future and she can't say has no say on the matter I am taking her back then and there they got her bags packed and that was the last we had seen of known of her a fine girl such a passion for this knowledge she would have been blossomed into a beautiful human being but one act of not measuring what to say to whom to say how much to say when to say, when to say what to say finished it exactly you are violating this principle she violated it she paid the price never ever unsettle the minds of the ignorant because they are comfortable in their understanding just because you have been benefited with a little knowledge on what right authority you have to go and dish it out to others and unsettle them there if at told you have something let it be drawn to you let people be drawn to you this is the price everybody pays and this is the phase everybody goes through and the phase is between walking 
you walked out of ignorance is not it you have a, the first in fact you must understand quickly I will mention ignorance manifests in three stages mood level on time ignorance agnyana mood level on time first is lack of information I do not know at all oh I did not know oh is this what the Gita has to say I did not know the Vedas I do not know what it is. So, the first level of ignorance avidya first level is I do not know now, how do you address that I do not know no. by knowing it by learning it it is known as shravana listening those days the only source of knowledge was listening there was no literature there was nothing written script those days. So, you heard men you got acquainted with the higher truths and you knew what the truths were. So, the ignorance was taken care of the first level information you have, but having got the information the second level of ignorance is still lurking which is lack of understanding. I know it but I do not understand how its relevance to my life how would it help me resolve challenge my challenges you know every now and then you keep coming across so much of uh, problems in the society in fact you find celebrities sir you know one of the one of the in thing nowadays you know everybody is going through the haves the problems of the haves the problems of the have nots are, are evident, but the problems of the haves is one of the biggest problem of the haves you know what is she depression. other day also somewhere I reading an article here and there you pick up it said been battling it all my life I did not know how to come up come out and open I did not know how to handle it I do not know where to go I know what is the solution and there is everything out there which could have which I, I can ask for I have got it and yet what is depression what is depression how do you understand depression. correct <laughs> information at least what is that one of the comments I come to here is the best thing I would want to do is just continue to sleep because the moment I wake up I know I have to deal with it can you imagine that can you imagine that state you and I may not know what it is, but it is like a cancer it is like a terminal disease for them you do not want to get up and look at the how bright your life can be that day and everything you have got your moment you walk out you you want to take a stroll you will be a, uh, you will have 25 photographers behind you that is the kind of celebrity royalty they enjoy and yet they, they have not found that peace they have not found that fulfillment they have not found that the real acme of life the real essence of life they have lost it that is a very certain indication that nothing external can give you anything that is satisfying internally nothing external if you if you still doubt it this is the benchmark you have got where how further you think you can go there is nothing, nothing external can give you some anything internal. So, there is a lack of information then there is lack of understanding for which we are requested we are told not requested we are advised to do manana reflection this is the part not many do. So, they do not understand how all this knowledge works and where does it fit in their life how does it help resolve their predicaments their challenges their concerns of life it has a solution for everything here is a knowledge of life and living for God's sake it can take care of everything what life throws at you it is just that you got to put your head down and try to make sense of it if you cannot make sense of it surrender to someone who can help you that is all you need to do everything in life can be taken care of by its own arrogance and ego and say I know I know what life is why should I surrender to some unknown fellow and ask them what life is about I can give you some idea if you want take a note man yeah, we have Brihaspati here all, all 
knowledge gushing out. So lack of information, lack of understanding, you may understand it also, but then you have not experienced it, lack of experience. I know it, I understand it, but I have not tasted it yet. And I connected this concept to everyone who walks out of ignorance, hmm? everyone who walks out of ignorance will go through the first two phases, information, understanding, but there is a transition between knowing which is information and becoming which is transformation and it is during this phase you will commit this mistake, you will blunder of trying to unsettle others because the moment the knowledge sinks into you and you find yourself well established, you will leave others to be what they are. All the excitement is when you walk into knowledge, when you start tasting it, you, you just cannot contain it, well intended as I have said, but it causes more damage than good and I have said this mistake is done by parents by teachers, by politicians, by gurus, history has stained people who have committed this error of violating this principle because there is a backlash, respect that, let, why should you respect that the next few verses will very well establish why you should never unsettle the minds of the ignorant. Though we have analyzed it thoroughly. But the reasons why you should leave, let others alone be what they are, the next few verses will clarify it, all right. 27. Prakrute kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvashaha ahankara vimudhatma kartahamiti manyate prakrute kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvashaha ahankara vimudhatma kartahamiti manyate Ajaya, just give another hand out to the gentleman. Prakrute kriyamanani Gunai karmani sarvashaha. In all cases, in every case, actions are performed by gunai karmani, by qualities known as gunas, which are product of prakriti nature. The opposite of prakriti is. <laughs> What is the, sorry sir, prakriti is creation, nature, what is the opposite of that? <laughs> the, the opposite word for the Sanskrit word prakriti. The opposite of that is uh, already somebody attempted, sir. <laughs> Purusha. Purusha means the self, means the reality, the transcendental. Matter and spirit. Prakriti is nature, prakriti means gunas, prakriti means vasanas. That which is opposed to prakriti, nature, gunas, vasanas is purusha, the spirit, the self, the consciousness. These are the two facets which come together, which constitute a human being, you and me, any being for that matter, any living being for that matter is a composition of spirit and matter. It is a fascinating definition, it's a fascinating even though it is a straightforward definition, it is fascinating. I know I have mentioned this, but I am tempted every time uh, I get into it, it just baffled me. I do not know whether it would strike a chord with you, 
but when I first heard this, this sentence baffled me, it still baffles me. What that sentence is, there is no life inherent in spirit, there is no life inherent in matter, but when spirit and matter come together, there is a scintillating expression of life. It just reverberates in my, in my system, everywhere, every molecule, every ounce of my system reverberates this. I remember so vividly resounding within me. I hope it does not leave me. I have been trying to contain it, you know. When it explodes, it will go all out. I am still containing. So, it is a statement. The statement is, there is no life inherent in matter acceptable matter is dead wood, dead matter other life will yeah there is no life in the life like that you leave the table here come back after one year it will remain here kadama ikkade untundi em life ledhi any dead matter is no life understandable yes matter there is no life inherent in matter similarly a dead body you have to leave a body there it will just lie there until a point where it starts decomposing and it takes another form of matter, but there is no further that can happen to it, is not it. So, there is no life inherent in matter, there is no life inherent in spirit and that was the that pulled the feet under my carpet, I mean what are you saying? There is no life inherent in spirit, now here we talk of spirit as God, as that Purusha, as consciousness, there is no life in spirit. And yet, spirit is the life giving force. That is how you give it a definition. Spirit or God is that life giving force which enables every matter to express itself. But there is no life inherent in it. When does the expression of life come? When these two come in contact with it. There is life. A best example, a classic example given here is electricity and the bulb. There is no light inherent in the bulb, is not it sir? The bulbs do not glow by themselves, do they? No. There is no light inherent in them. Neither is there light inherent in electricity, but when light comes in contact with the bulb, there is a brilliant expression of light, exactly the same way. There is no life inherent in Atman, there is no life inherent in the matter, but when they come in contact, there is life. Outstanding. The sad part is, there is that much you can convey in words. Beyond that, it is for you to take it up. Now, why I slipped into this because of the word Prakriti. So much implication, so you, you got to make sure you do not slip away from it. We will come back to the verse, we will come back and the verse is saying in all cases actions are performed by goodness. One who is deluded by egoism thinks I am the doer. An egoistic fellow, ahankara, vimudhatma, karta, hamiti manyate. I, I am the doer, I am the karta, but who is that who is doing? It is just the vasanas are functioning men, gunas are functioning and what enables the gunas to function? The atman. There is the atman and then there is the gunas, the prakriti. Sir, if I were to look each one of you, each one of you different, certainly no two are the same. What makes you all different from one another? Gunas. And your gunas are unique to you, isn't it? That is your personality. Now, when you are functioning, what is it that enables you to function? The Atman functioning through the gunas is what you are. Egoist of thinks I am doing, ahankar, I am doing, you are doing nothing man. 
the atman is functioning the gunas are helplessly expressing all the what are you doing in it oh i put on that switch you have just putting on the switch na talking of switch sir can you put on one switch of aircon i am feeling very warm here is it on no i don't know. thank you <laughs> so i remember if you recall i said last week the chronology of action the chronology is there is a vasana there is a thought there is a desire there is an action so as your vasanas so will be your thoughts so is your desires so are your actions now when he talks about actions in all cases are performed by the gunas what i what he is advising us is to understand and segregate the gunas from the self the fact that there is purusha and prakriti you are expected to separate it see there when i look at you i can choose to identify with the prakriti in you or the purusha in you i identify with prakriti i burn my hands well it's your gunas i have got nothing to do with the gunas the moment you identify with the purusha the self where he is not talking the oneness you you will have no problem with life <clears throat> all problems in life comes about because of identifying with prakriti with the gunas as long as you identify with the matter with the equipment you suffer the moment you don't identify with it you don't suffer all the suffering boils down to your identification don't identify leave it alone no problem what is it in you that remains unaffected harish there is something in you that remains unaffected by all that's happening around you the self now when you are affected why are you affected by anything identifying with the with the matter so when you identify with matter what happens you become the matter that's the law of identification you all must understand what is the law of identification the same is holds good as the law of attachment what's the law of identification or law of attachment shiva no doubt but what what do I, what in fact you you pull in your own way the law of identification or attachment is whatever you think of you become it as you think so you become even if you love somebody you are attached to it see because the what is the fundamental principle of either love or hatred is your thoughts are going towards it if i if i entertain a hatred towards you the undercurrent is my i am constantly thinking of you so i will always develop an attachment to it either way you are either way you are attached now what we are saying is when you are attached to the equipment the body mind and intellect you become it isn't it now when you become it what happens the world only affects the body mind intellect the world only affects prakriti the world doesn't affect purusha 
So a person who is spiritual, why is it that he remains unaffected by everything? Because he is attuned to the self, he is identifying with the self, he is not identifying with the equipments, he is not identifying with the layers, the vestures. Shift your focus. Now to bring about that he says there is this Prakriti, there is this Purusha. You have to make a choice what you identify with. There is a message inbuilt here. Everything is nothing but gunas functioning. So what you got to understand is, when you look at others gunas, have I got anything to do with it? Somebody has got very charitable gunas. or irritable gunas, it is his gunas, what have I got to do with it? Now exactly the same thing just as you see others gunas and you say I have got nothing to do with it, so must you start looking at your own gunas and say I have got nothing to do with it. That is the, the leap you got to take. First understand gunas are functioning, it is prakriti, it is your vasanas, it is gunas, it has got nothing to do with the purusha, you become what you identify with, you identify with prakriti, you suffer the consequences, you identify with purusha no problem. When you look at others gunas you say it is their gunas I have got nothing to do with it and then he says you should have the same detachment to your own gunas. Sadramji, why should you be detached to your own gunas and say I have got nothing to do with it, rather difficult. Why should you be a witness to your own gunas? So that you don't identify with. We will call you Setra Raman and he will call him Shiva from next time. Sorry sir. Why should you not get attached to it? In fact, you know the problem is we are not witness to others actions only. Somebody others are doing, you are getting very irritated. We are affected by others gunas. We are not, we are not a witness to their gunas, we are not witness to their actions. If you are a witness, you will remain unaffected. That is their karma, that is their problem, that is their personality. What have I got to do with it? Ilama. Huh? You starting, you become custodian of their conscience. Since when have you become custodians of others conscience? Since when I started deciding what you are doing is right or wrong and I start deciding and determining what you should do and what you should not do. <laughs> that is understood Ilya, you become mental after the after. But you, you start, it is such a, you know, it is like I, I intrude into your property and saying it's mine and if I put my foot down you will get me kicked out. If I am a visitor you would not mind but if I come and start making it my permanent residence you say get out man, it is not your permanent abode, you are a welcome visitor no problem but it is not your abode.